Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd habatafillah. A question was asked, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For a while now I've been dealing with what I think is waswas. I'll try my best to explain while reading the Quran certain Arabic words that I'm not familiar with or that sound like certain English words will stick out while reading and in my head. I don't know if it's whispers from shaitan trying to make me laugh at said words or think that they are funny or if it is myself. I've also been struggling with the nullifier of mocking the deen and I can't differentiate between what's considered mocking the deen or not. Uh, except, uh, for example, if I laugh at a joke that may not be mocking something of Islam, but a Muslim said it, or if a speaker mentions something funny because it is in the context of something from the deen, I feel like I'm mocking it. And so many times a day I find myself having to repent, thinking that I've left the fold of Islam by way of one of my actions. I'm also having issues with tahara, when I'm praying, for example, I feel something and I think I broke my wudu. Then I will remember the hadith about not leaving the prayer unless you hear something or smell something. But then I think that I felt it and it was mostly like something. Then I feel like I broke my wudu, so I leave my prayer, perform wudu, and start again. When I think about the hadith, I fear that when I feel something, I know it is my wudu breaking, and I fear my prayer is invalid, which is why I leave my prayer and do wudu again. At this point, I don't know if it's waswas from the shaitan, or if all of this is from my own nefs, and I try to convince myself that it is just whispers, but then I don't know and fear my actions may be invalid. Also when I pray, or just other times, thoughts of kufr may come across my head, and at this point it's like expecting it's like expecting it, so I don't know if expecting is bringing on the thoughts or not, going back to me feeling like I've nullified my Islam in some way, so I go through the three parts of repentance constantly. I know it is good to constantly repent, but I feel like I'm doing it in cases that I haven't sinned. If it was waswas, I feel that I'm letting it get the best of me. I constantly seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, and I'm trying to remain patient. If it is from myself, then I really don't know what to do. I hope this makes sense, and you can advise me on this. Barakallah fikum. We've talked about this before. Wafikum barakallah. And really, this is clearly a case of uh, waswas. And this is how the shaitan will come to you. And don't think that anyone is free from this waswas. Another point is often the stimulus that we put into ourselves. For example, if someone is listening to music, if someone is uh, watching movies, if they're you know uh, doing other things which even worse than that, and they're putting in negative stimulus, this is easy for those things to come in the back of their head. It's easy. The more you put purity into yourself, like a pure, clean glass of water, then the less time there is for impurities, and those impurities can be waswas and other thoughts which are evil thoughts from the shaitan or otherwise. So it's very important to put yourself, uh, you know, purify your surroundings by having khair, being around good, stimulating yourself with good. Uh, this is a major question, and there's actually many issues going on, but they all come back to really waswas. It's from the shaitan. And I will just mention a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which you mention, and it's the hadith on Ubad ibn Tamim, on Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim al-Mazani, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, qala shukiya ila nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rajul yukhayilu ilayhi anhu yajidu shayfi salat. Qala la yansaraf hatta yisma' sawtin, and this is in uh, this is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Ubad ibn Taymim, uh, who narrated it on Abdullah ibn Zayd uh, al-Mazini, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that a man came complaining to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, uh, or who said, the, the man, uh, he said, Shukiya le Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rajalu yukhayilu ilayhi annahu yajida shayfi salat. So this man came 
to the Prophet wasallam, and he was complaining that he found something in his prayer. And the Prophet wasallam said, لا ينصرف, Do not leave the prayer. حتى يسمع صوتا أو يجد ريحاً. He said, Do not leave the prayer unless you hear something or you smell something. This hadith is a hadith azim, and this gives you a qaida. If you practice this qaida, for those who, who deal with these issues of waswas like this constantly, that if you practice this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, this, this dhabit, this hadith here, it gives you uh, important criterion for all of your issues because so many people have the fitna of the waswas in their tahara. And we've known so many people, they can't even finish prayers because they always break in their prayer because they are afraid that they broke their wudu or they're afraid they didn't make tahara. And from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, and I'm going to read this uh, ibarah, and forgive me for uh, being excessive in the Arabic sometimes, and I, I'll just try to be ikhtasar. This is from Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman, uh, Abdurrahman Nasser al-Barak, Sheikh Barak, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, one of the major scholars here in Riyadh. And... In his explanation, it's a new book uh, of, of uh, Umdat Ahkam in this hadith. But here's what he says, and many of the ulama, they point that this hadith is dalil, it is evidence for this qaida, this very important qaida. In the qaida, he says, and the shakla yarfar yaqeen. That doubt does not remove certainty. So, we won't go... We'll leave the book now. Yakfina hada. Doubt does not remove certainty. I want you to memorize that. I said it twice. Doubt does not remove certainty. Uh, and there's many different ways you'll find this qaida in, in the books of Asul um, al-Fiqh. Uh, Al-Yaqeen. La yazil al-Yaqeen bishak. O la... لا يزول ال ااا يقين بشك أو كما قيل. There's so many different ways you find this قاعدة worded in Arabic. The point is, for the fourth time, doubt does not remove certainty. So, in the case of your prayer, if you're in salat and you know you made wudu. You do remain, you know, don't let the, whenever you start getting that whispering, that's the doubt coming in. You know, did I make, we'll do, cut that, cut it. That's doubt. Because you know your ada, your normal habit is that you make wudu. Maybe some people, they make wudu and they keep try to keep wudu all the day. That when I was younger, when I was a new Muslim, I used to always try to be, uh, keep that tahara. And, and not, you know, for like all five salats, I would try to, you know, do that, hardly break my wudu, you know. Probably not the healthiest practice. But anyhow, akramakullah. The, the point is, habitifillah, is that your, that doubt does not remove yaqeen. Doubt does not remove certainty. So if you were certain that you made wudu, you remember that. You can remember, at one, oh yeah, for asr I made wudu. And now you're doubting whether you have wudu or not. But you do recall actually performing wudu. Throw away the shuck. Throw away the doubt. Doubt does not remove certainty. Uh, if you're in the prayer, which is the case in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam, as the man came and he complained to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and who yajida shay fi salat, that he thought, again, this was the what. This is the doubt coming in. He thought, he was not sure that whether he was on tahara or not because he thought that he felt something. Again, this is doubt. The Prophet ﷺ gave us two dhabit, two criterion in that hadith. He said, La yansarif hatta yasma sultan. So if you don't clearly hear something, if you hear something, khalas, break your salah and go make wudu. If you don't hear anything, and you don't smell anything, then do not leave your prayer. But if, of course, 
if you don't hear and you don't smell, but you definitely feel it. I mean, it's no, it's not like, oh, I felt a little something, but you know you pass gas, law, then of course you break your salat. If you know you broke your salat, then that's yakin. Now the yakin has entered. You're certain that you broke your wudu. Then you have to leave the prayer. If you are doubting about this issue, which is a lot of the questions that come up, this is was was. The other point, those other issues of the joke of uh, laughing at jokes, if it doesn't have anything to do with the deen, it's not istisabidin. Okay? Right there we ruled that out. Chop it off. If it is, uh, you hear somebody and they say something uh, and they mention something about the deen. I know there's now Muslim comedians all over the place. Uh, in the West, this is becoming a popular thing, especially those who are more liberal and more secular oriented. And they're comedians, and they're, you know, and some of them, they, they're on a dangerous ground. Aslan, they're on a dangerous ground. But especially when they, because their whole thing, they think they're doing halal, so they're talking about Muslim topics. They talk about, if they're immigrant, if they're from an immigrant community, they're talking about uh, indigenous people, making fun of them, or making fun of reverts, or or vice versa, or they're making fun of immigrants, or whatever the case may be, but they're making fun of the, not those, but they're making fun of the, their scenarios. Oh, the sister with the big hijab, she's like this. The brother with the big beard, he's like this. You know, they end up, they're on a dangerous path, and sometimes they can fall into kofr. So that is something, if you hear something like that, then that's where you move, you remove yourself from that gathering, or you remove yourself from watching that. Whatever the case may be, you get away from that. They make it stuck far. And this is in accordance with the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the, uh, listening to, you know, when, when you hear those uh, ridiculing the deen or, or, you know, speaking ill about Allah and his messenger and his deen, then you remove yourself from them uh, until they return back to good speech. And so... That is a very important principle to follow. Likewise, you mention about, you know, all of this is, is based on waswas, that the shaitan is whispering you, uh, whispering to you, you hear an Arabic word or something, you know, from the book of Allah or the son of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then you equate it to an English word that sounds similar to it, which is totally different. And, and that's just the shaitan popping in your head. And that's just familiarity with languages. You, you're an English speaker. Arabic is not your native tongue or whatever the case may be. And you you used to that as a, it's a foul word in English, which sounds like a terminology which uh, is in, in a, a whole different language. That's not harming you, especially if you cut that off and you're not uh, continuing on with that. The point is a habitifillah, that when it comes to these issues, you have to cut it off. And I know it's easier said than done because I've seen and I've dealt with people who've suffered from this waswas. And sometimes it stems from mental illness. Sometimes it stems from legitimate waswas or, you know, a mental illness or some psychological disorder, whether it be a light disorder or whether it be a major disorder. So those are things which are really above the scope of what we can offer because when it comes to a psychological illness then that person needs to deal with that uh, and treat it in the, accordingly and deal with professionals in that if it is something if it's legitimately just was was and there's nothing be in ta'ala and there's nothing behind it which is uh, a psychological a form of dementia or what have you then nipping it in the bud is the way you just cut that off because no one is free from that. Don't think that myself, even ulama and others don't get, but the ones who put more purity into their environment, generally they're going to be less inclined towards that. You're not gonna come and be in the prayer and a Tupac song is gonna come up and nowadays Eminem or whoever, uh, Jay-Z or whatever, that's not gonna come in your prayer if you're not listening to that or uh, reminiscing on those those things, so the the one who puts more purity and surrounds himself, you know, Kitabi Allah, Sunnat Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and speaking khair and 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 good, 
then they're going to be less likely. That doesn't mean they're, it's absolute, but they're less likely to have those more severe forms of waswas. So putting in good stimulus and dealing with it, again, for the last time, doubt is not removed by certainty. Think about that and practice that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.